Welcome to lesson three in this module on how internet companies use digital business models. So far, we've discussed the digital business model of Apple, Google, Facebook, and Amazon. We've explained how they're based on network effects. We've also presented how these companies create, deliver, capture, and defend value. We'll see similar business model patterns apply to the case of two of the biggest China-based internet companies, Xiaomi and Tencent. Specifically in the case of Xiaomi, their WeChat, messaging and e-commerce application. We'll start by discussing Xiaomi and its digital business model. But first, an introduction for those not familiar with the company. Founded in 2010, Xiaomi is now the fourth largest smartphone maker globally, trailing only Samsung, Huawei and Apple. It was valued at around $50 billion after initial public offering in mid-2018. The Xiaomi business model is using smartphones to create an engaged user base for selling own branded products under its Mi brand. Xiaomi products are offered at a fraction of the cost of their Western counterparts. For example, from $300 for a fully featured smartphone to a $30 fully featured activity tracking wristband. Beyond its smartphones, the Mi ecosystem products are built by over 100 different partners, not Xiaomi itself. They include items from TVs uh, and internet routers to power banks, electric scooters and even rice cookers. For its ecosystem products, Xiaomi partners with hardware companies, providing seed money for ecosystem products as well as access to Xiaomi's supply chain, marketing, retail and industrial designers. In return, Xiaomi gets an exclusive deal to sell most of the products from that startup or hardware company. To drive demand for the Mi ecosystem products, Xiaomi uses a multi-sided network connecting users with Mi smartphones, ecosystem partners and content developers. To its users, Xiaomi offers a wide range of consumer electronics products with a distinctive white minimalist, maybe Apple-like feel at very low prices. To its ecosystem hardware partners, Xiaomi offers access to its users, supply chain and industrial designers in return for exclusivity of retailing these products. To content providers and software developers, Xiaomi offers access to its fan base, that is its user base, in return for content and store apps. This exhibits network effects. The more smartphones are sold, the more Mi ecosystem devices are sold and the more content and software developers are attracted to Xiaomi. These network effects grow the demand for the Xiaomi electronics business. Let's now analyze Xiaomi's business model. We consider its traditional business model as a pure smartphone maker, i.e. the way the company started back in 2010. We consider its digital business model the addition of its over 100 different ecosystem partners with Xiaomi branded products. Xiaomi creates value through high quality yet affordable smartphones. Digitally, it creates value through its range of thousands of home electronics products from TVs and air purifiers to wristbands and drones. Xiaomi delivers that value through its online store where it offers more than 10,000 products. It does not use physical distribution or retail points, but all of its hardware is sold online and marketed through word of mouth, significantly reducing its distribution costs. Digitally, Xiaomi delivers value through smartphone apps that control all the ecosystem devices, making Xiaomi smartphones the remote control for home. Xiaomi captures value through smartphone sales, although not any profit. In 2013, Xiaomi founder Lei Jun told reporters that Xiaomi selling mobile phones is like Amazon selling Kindles. Digitally, Xiaomi makes a small profit from the sale of Mi ecosystem devices. Lei Jun said characteristically, buying a power bank from us is like giving us a tip in a way. Xiaomi defends its business model through a strong community brand and a sense of belonging. Its tagline is only for fans injecting a sense of exclusivity and privilege to Xiaomi users. Similarly, it uses flash sales where products are available only over very short 
time windows. For example, on its occasion of the fifth birthday in 2015, Xiaomi ran a 12-hour flash sale that ended up selling more than 2.1 million smartphones via me.com, setting effectively what was a new Guinness World Record. Digitally, Xiaomi defends its extended device business model through what we call experience rowing. What that means is devices with the Xiaomi ecosystem work seamlessly with each other and as such the user experience roams from one device to the next. As with other digital business models, value is created with complements, that is every device for their home, that is bundled with a core business of hardware sales. We should see this business model evolve as according to Hugo Barra, who was in Xiaomi in 2014, the company sees hardware sales as a means of delivering software and services. Now let's move to discuss a different yet still China-based company, Tencent, which is one of the biggest e-commerce companies globally with 11 billion US dollars of revenues as of May 2018. Specifically, we'll look at WeChat, the company's messaging and e-commerce platform that has set the standards that Facebook is now following in its Messenger and WhatsApp apps. WeChat was created in 2011 by Tencent and has grown to over 1 billion monthly active users, roughly 90% of which are in China. But firstly, what is WeChat? WeChat is a messaging app that's used for sending text, voice and photos to friends and family. It's also a super app, a one-stop shop destination where users in China can access services like hailing a taxi, ordering food delivery, buying movie tickets, buying health insurance, checking in for a flight, buying a smartphone, buying a drink through bottled drinks dispensers on the street, sending money to friends, accessing fitness tracker data, booking a doctor's appointment, getting banking statements, paying the electricity bill, recognizing music, following celebrity news, and much, much more. WeChat is also a platform for web apps that amount to over 1 million, a staggering number considering that the WeChat App Store launched in early 2017. WeChat apps have access to APIs for payments, user ID, location, messaging users, and more. And so to drive demand for its e-commerce and payments business, WeChat uses a two-sided network connecting users with app developers and service providers. To its users, WeChat offers a messaging app and portal with a formidable diversity of approved third-party apps, from booking a doctor's appointment to buying jewelry. To app developers, on the other hand, and service providers, it offers a user base of over a billion active users, most of them in China, and a set of payment identity and messaging APIs that can be used to create rich experiences on the application. These experiences follow a user from awareness to purchase to in-life use of the services, something that doesn't exist with major social networks in the West. This arrangement exhibits network effects. The more users that sign up to WeChat messaging, the more service providers are attracted to create web apps for WeChat. These network effects grow the demand for the Tencent e-commerce and payment business. Let's now analyze WeChat's business model. We consider its traditional business as a messaging business, much like that of Facebook. We consider its digital business as the addition of its 1 million apps and associated service providers. In the diagram that you see, WeChat creates value through free messaging and voice calls that users can place to practically the majority of the internet-connected population in China. Digitally, it delivers value through 1 million apps, from booking a doctor's appointment to buying health insurance. WeChat delivers value through the WeChat app, the super app that is first a messaging platform and secondly a portal for China's leading service providers. In its traditional business model as a messaging platform, WeChat captures value through ads. However, increasingly the value is captured as a commission of e-commerce transactions and payment transactions. WeChat's average revenue per user, or ARPU, is estimated to be around 7 US dollars. Finally, the WeChat platform defends its business model through its huge user base of messaging users, and secondly, through its unrivaled base of web developers and service providers producing a diverse range of 1 million apps.
As with other digital business models, the apps are the complements of the WeChat core business. The complements are bundled together with Tencent's commerce and payments business by virtue of the APIs controlled by Tencent. This concludes the discussion of network effects as parts of digital business models. In the next lesson, we'll discuss asymmetric business models and how they're practiced by Google, Facebook, Amazon, and Apple. See you soon.